Carlo Max, you pleaded guilty to serious acts of damage to property. Now, fortunately, nobody was injured. But not, it seems, through any notion of restraint on your part. Now, this court will not tolerate teenage vandalism. But it is your first offence. And since the police officers in question consider your personal circumstances merit further study, I'm going to postpone sentence. You're remanded in custody until a report into your case is to hand. Set me free, oh set me free, little girl. You can take him down, All officer. You gotta do is set me free, little girl. You know you can do it if you try. All you gotta do is set me free, free, free. All right. Set me free. How do you think it'll go for Carl? Blaming the police for the death of his father is no excuse to go about vandalizing police stations and property, really. No such. But if he's genuinely learned his lesson, he could get off with a warning. Enjoying it, aren't you? Couldn't wait to see him locked up. He's to blame for his predicament, not us. Carl was provoked into what he did. He's never been any trouble to anyone. How dare you say that? Your son pressurized my daughter into going on the pill. <laughs> Listen to her! Your daughter had nothing to do with it, I suppose. You're a stupid, ignorant woman. Stupid? I'll give you stupid! That's oh, quite enough of that, Mrs. Lomax. I think you should go. Yes, with pleasure. Trust you lot to take their side. If it weren't for you, we wouldn't be locked up now. Bradley, I think you and Bellamy better keep an eye on that situation. That could be a full-time job, Sarge. Why do I have to get that dressed up too, Mr. Vernon? Because, David, Today, you are my chauffeur, and in the world of commerce, image is everything. Goodness, that's over and done with. Certainly. He won't be troubling you again, Deborah. What do you mean? Mum? He's been remanded in custody. Carl? In prison? Deborah. If you've got any sense at all, you'll put him out of your mind. You're all against him. Why? What's Carl ever done to you? It's not fair. No contact between her and that boy, we agree, oh, yes? Is in your eyes. The love your heart can't disguise. driving you about. You've never made me wear a suit before. Uh, Mr. Hawkins, uh, Vernon Scripps, we spoke on the telephone. Dressed like that, I thought you were bailiffs. <laughs> oh, no, me. I'm a, a chauffeur when I'm dressed like this. All right, Otherwise, David. I'm, I'm here to buy your slot machines, Mr. Hawkins. Well, there they are, 20 and all. Turned a good profit for me till I was forced out of business. Don't worry, Mr. Hawkins. Mr. Vernon's going to pay more than the. All right, David, I'll do the talking. <laughs> Now, um, had you on a price in mind, Mr. Hawkins? Make me an offer. Let me see now. Twenty machines in reasonable working order. Let's say uh, six quid a piece. You'll not get more from the bailiffs. Well, no, they'll not be willing to go up to ten like Mr. David. Burton. Seven quid a piece then. Seven quid. You'll not get a better offer. Well, no, it's not. If you sold them one by David, one. David, will you shut up? I've already had a better offer. But let's just say I won't sell them to a competitor. Right, well, uh, eight quid apiece, and that's my final offer. It's a deal. Do we shake on it? Done. <laughs> and you know, David was right. You could have bid me up, Mr Hawkins. There's no time. The bailiffs are on the way, and they would have flogged them for peanuts. But you could have bought them for half the price, Mr Scripps. <laughs> Uh, 
how long have the families been feuding like this? Well, you're the reporter. That's for you to find out. Some people blame Dr. Summerby. You know, getting the village kids all steamed up by doling out contraceptive pills. What a stupid thing to say. She's hardly doling them out. She's a good doctor. Uh, same again. What do you think, Mr. Blaketon? Well, uh, call me old-fashioned, but if I had a young daughter, I don't think I'd want her to be on the pill. Not without my consent. Oh, what, so you'd rather have a pregnant? Don't put words into my mouth, Gina. Go on, Mr. Blaketon. I just think that if she was mine, I'd want to protect her from that kind of pressure, at least until she came of age, that's all. By which time, Oscar, it could be too late. And a lot of people round here think the same, Gina. Shut up. Well, with Carl out of the way, it'll all blow over. You'll see. The whites have been just as tough on their own kid. Thanks. Trisha says they're keeping Deborah almost a prisoner in the house. Uh, yes, I'll know. Carl Lomax is in court today. I heard he's been kept somewhere. Could I have the address, please? You're a friend of Deborah White's? That's right. Is it for her? Who says it's not for me? You do know what you're getting yourself into. All I want is Carl's address. There's no law against that, is there? No. And you are? Jenny Kirby. Why? Just so that we know, Miss Kirby. Thank you. Hello? It's Jenny. Jenny Kirby. Can I speak to Deborah, please? It's Jenny. Do you mind if I speak to my friend in private? Or is that forbidden too? It's you we're thinking of, love. Well, if you stay, I'll put the phone down. Very well. Don't be too long about it. Jenny? Yeah, she's gone. You got it. Brilliant. Look, can you call in on your way home? I need a letter posted. Have a look at you. Oh. Oh. So, who's been giving my favourite sister a hard time, eh? Hey! Hey! Oh. Look, just one of me. Yes? Can you confirm that the Executive Council are concerned about your activities in Haydensfield? And you are? Andy Sachs, reporter for the Ashford Gazette. I don't know where you get your information from. You prescribed a pill for a 16-year-old girl, didn't you? That's not true. You're denying you put Deborah White on the pill? Yes, and it's none of your business. How many other teenagers have you put on the pill, Doctor, without parental consent? Goodbye, Mr Sykes. And the parents of Carl Lomax and Deborah White are at each other's throats. Other parents in Haydensfield are up in arms. Is that something you're proud of? Is that something you want to comment on, Doctor Summerby? Yes, go to hell! You bought 20 of these. I thought we'd start small. Start what? Another Las Vegas? Oh, I've seen that on the television. Hey, it'd be great if there was one here. Bernard, I've got all these machines for 160 quid. That's a small price to pay for what I've got in mind. Well, you haven't got a bean. Never mind 160 quid. Well, true. But we have in the kitty for Scripps Taxi Services. That's for our new motor. Bernard, I've got a plan. Tell me, how many pubs can you name in this part of Yorkshire alone? Hundreds. Exactly. Oh, me too. There's the, uh, the Queen's Head at Kirby. There's the, uh, that Rat Catcher's Arms place. And every one of them are licensed to print money for Scripps Enterprises. The Saracen's Head that Mr Greengrass used to like. Just trust me, Bernard. Oh, there's the uh, Headless Woman. <laughs> <sighs> 
I have mothers ringing me up in a state, convinced I'm just handing out the pill to their daughters. Do they actually believe I'm encouraging promiscuity in the village? What, you think someone's stirring it up? Well, the White started it, but it's taken on a life of its own. It's nasty, Mike. The Executive Council have had complaints. They called me in today, and then some sleazy reporters started pestering me as I left the hospital. Hello, surgery. Yes, it's Dr. Somerby. Who is this? Very brave of you. Yeah, I do have something to say. You're a disgusting, cowardly... Anonymous call. What'd they say? Don't ask, Mike. pick you up after school. We'd appreciate it if you were here when she arrives. Can I go now? Yes. Goodbye. Community, family feuding, threats of violence, sexual promiscuity. I'm not talking about the last days of the Roman Empire here, are my Ventress? No, sir. No. Aidensfield, a rural community on the North Yorkshire Moors. And why should that concern us, Bellamy? Uh, it's on our patch, Sarge. Quite. Controversial GP Patricia Summerby and anti pill spokesman Oscar Blakedon. Has the world gone completely mad? Well, uh, the uh, reporter, Sarge Sykes, a real sleaze merchant, troublemaker. Heaven knows what impression this kind of sensation-mongering rubbish is going to have on division. That's a local paper, Sarge. It won't travel that far. Ashwardly Police Station. It's for you, Sarge. Division. I'll take it inside. Call me Charlie. All my friends do. Oh, right. It's just uh, I'm not. Um, you want the pub, Mr. Woods? Charlie. Uh, Charlie. Not the pub. Not just yet. Not till we've done our deal. Oh, I, I don't do deals. I, I just do uh, jobs, Mr. Woods. <laughs> Charlie. Uh, Charlie. Is it the person you These want? Slot machines, Mr. Scripps. 
I want them. I'll pay you more than you paid. More than they're worth. Oh, well, I can't do that, you see. These are all part of, of Mr Vernon's uh, plan. <laughs> Mr Hawkins sold them to you, but he promised them to me. You see, they're not for sale. I haven't even finished polishing them yet. You're not listening. I need these machines, and I intend to have them. That's a, that's a fair price, of course. Well, you, you, you can't have them. I mean, you go and ask Mr Vernon, he'll tell you exactly the same thing. Oh, I'm very sorry, Mr Woods, um, Charlie. What's going on? Oh, Mr Scripps, it's Mr uh, Woods, um, Charlie here. He's been asking if we can have the machines. Well, I said he couldn't have them, but, well, Mr Woods, Charlie, he's not really listening. Well, c can you tell him and I'll get back to polish my machines? You won't, David. The slot machines aren't for sale. You and your brother, not thinking of going into arcade business, I hope. What's it to you? I don't like competition, and I need these machines. Goodbye, Mr Woods. Oh, it's a Charlie. Very well. Have it your way. Will you ask anyone about Charlie Woods, and they'll tell you that what he wants, he usually gets. Any idea when? You took your time finding out. All right, we'll take it from here. Uh, Carl Lomax has absconded. Absconded out? Well, they don't know. They think he's had a good two-hour start. Well, all that kid needs with his sentencing coming up. They think he's headed this way. They found a letter in his room from Deborah White, and they're convinced that's the reason he took off. Right, I want Lomax found and fast. Come on, look, can we get your breakfast? Can I a bit of sausage? Yeah. I'll try a <laughs> That knocked us some of it. You get some stick in here. Serves it right. Is that put that Deborah on the pill? What's she like? A doctor. She's just a slip of a girl. Don't know whether she's coming or going, running a practice like that on her own. That's a bad fighting, difficult girl. Mm, quite right. Do we have a word, please, Mrs. Lomax? What now? Can we talk inside, please? Say what you have to say or get lost. It's all right, sis. Don't mind the manners now I'm here. And you are? Eddie Ford. He's my brother. See how you get on pushing him around? Feel for your son, Mrs. Lomax. Carl, why? What's happened? He's absconded. We have reason to believe he's making his way towards Aidensfield. If Carl does show up, or gets in contact in any way, persuade him to turn himself in. I assure you, it will not do your son's case any good if we find him before he finds us. Good day to you. around here pestering my daughter again. Well, we hope to find him before that, Mrs White. Well, if you don't, what then? Try not to worry, Mrs White. So you say, but it's not your daughter he's after. If my husband catches him again with Deborah, that boy will live to regret it. We don't take kindly to threats of violence, Mrs White. Really? When decent people are simply trying to protect their children? Violence is not the answer. Is Deborah at home? She's at school. I'm going to collect her soon. Well, persuade her that it's in uh, Carl's best interest to turn himself in. Deborah won't be seeing him. We'll make absolutely sure of that. Cost the pub a bean. They just sit there in the corner and all you hear is the sound of profit every time somebody pulls a handle. You brought me here to listen to this con artist. Oh, the pub could do with livening up. Don't be so suspicious. I've seen more shady tricks than you've had hot dinners, Gina. 
come on, Oscar. That's no way to talk about a, a legitimate business proposition. Yeah, we can't lose, Mr. Blaketon. Well, I mean, you can't lose. You got no cash from our till, if that's what you're hoping. I know. Look, while the trial runs on, we use these tokens. Yeah, you see, the punters buy them at the bar, and then if they win, they exchange them for drinks. Ah, oh, so that's your game, is it? We pay for the drinks. No, I do. Well, at least while the trial runs on. After that, it's all cash. Well, I think it sounds great. I wouldn't touch it with a barge pole. Look, I decide what goes on in the pub, not you. Yeah, remember, Mr. Blaketon, everyone's a winner with... If I have to listen to a parrot, I expect it to have feathers. I'm off to Whitley, wasting my time, I tell you. Oscar! Can we take that as a definite maybe, Oscar? Hello? Trisha? Mike, I'm in the pharmacy. Come through. Hi. Look, I'm meeting Phil in the pub. I just wondered if you fancied a drink. Oh, I've still got some visits to make. Maybe later. Look, I... I saw today's paper. You as well, eh? The Executive Council rang again today. I'm going to swallow that scaremongering rubbish, are they? Well, I've already told them the facts, but the press interest means they have to investigate. They've assured me there's nothing to worry about. Well, I should hope so. It's not as if you forced Deborah White to go on the pill. I just referred her to a family planning clinic. Well, did you tell that reporter then? Well, he's not interested in the truth, Mike. Lies sell more papers. Well, he's well and truly dropped you, innit? It's not about me. It's about Deborah, about girls like Deborah. If I turn them away, where do they end up? Down some backstreet abortionist? Surgery. Slow down, where are you? No, don't touch him. I'm on my way. I'm in a car accident, Mike. That was the driver. I'll come with you. There's no sign of it. You sure you got the directions right? Yeah, this is it. You said we'd see the car headlights. Well, there's nothing here, Trisha. No. A hoax. All your night. No, it's all right. Hasn't started yet. Look, um, I'm sure you don't want to join us for a drink. Thanks, but I've still got my visits. What is it? Doors open. The drugs. What's missing? And amphetamines, dihydrocodine, pentazacine. They've been cleaned out, Mike. Outside the doctor's house, the uh, well, it was last night, I think. No, I don't think so. Not at all. Yeah. The lock's been levered open. And by somebody who knew what they were doing. And they knew what they wanted. Only drugs you can sell on the streets were taken. Not on most streets, Dr. Summerby. Jenny! Jenny! Come on, I'm gonna be late. Are you all right? I'm fine. Just dead no, I'm out. Deborah in the whole universe. She's going spare, Carl. I need to see her. How? Her parents don't even let her out the site. Can you get a message to her? Yeah. A man was seen loitering outside the surgery last night. What time? Uh, about the time that you and Dr. Summerby were called out. Well, that call was obviously a setup for the burglary. I agree. Bradley, you wouldn't better me check on visitors to the village, especially anybody checking into guest accommodation. Not having much luck, I. Andy Sykes, Ashford League Gazette, sir. Hmm. That, Mr. Sykes. Yesterday you lose Carl Lowe, Max. Last night a surgery burgle. Do you have a comment on that? No. And that's not an invitation for you to make one up, Mr. Sykes. What was next in there? Drugs? We're still assessing the loss. Oh. I've been with drugs. How will that look when they're on our streets? You've put Aidensville on the map, Mr. Sykes. 
attracted all sorts of people here, including the person who most probably burgled that surgery. I'm following your career with interest, Mr. Sykes. Clear off, Mr. Sykes. Well, you'll find they won't let you down. Oh, that's great. I must press on. I've still got a few more jobs to do. Oh, that's fine. Well, goodbye then, Mr. Cedric, and uh, well, thanks for all your great work. Ah, oh, it's all part of the service. That was Mr. Cedric. It's working, David. It's all falling into place. I've spoken to three more pubs today. Yeah, he was at my Mr. Hawkins, was Mr. Cedric. He's come to do a, a maintenance job. David, you're not listening. There's three more pubs willing to take our slot machines. Now, if they make a profit at the arms. All right, well, that's, that's great. It was all right then to let Mr. Cedric uh, carry on then with it. Yes, whatever. Nothing can stop us now. We're on our way. Well, that's great. Well, it's amazing the way they all fit you back, back together again when he. We kiss in a shadow We hide from the moon Our meetings are few and over too soon We speak in a whisper They're on at me every minute I'm in the house Carl's this, Carl's that. Carl will destroy my future. I'm trying to poison my mind. Should I hear what my mum says about you and your parents? No worse, I bet than what mine think of yours. It's who cares? Why can't they just leave us alone? What have we ever done to them? It's just the way things are, Debs. Nothing's gonna change. Well, what if the police find you? I <laughs> can't bear it. Listen, they're not gonna find me. If I'm not here... What will you do? Get lost. In London, maybe. It's a big city. Millions live there. Who'd notice us? You'll take me with you? I'm not going anywhere without you. Oh, can we really do it, Carl? Get away and be together? Yeah. I've planned it all out. If it's what you really want, to be with me. Some total of guest house visitors in the last few days. Two commercial travellers, one granny and a bird watcher. You? Yeah. Uh, two family groups, one runaway missus, two vicars. Hello, lads. Get you anything? Uh, Four cheese pie. sandwich for me, please. All right, I'll get some fresh. Have uh, you had a chat with him yet? Uh, I'll ask him in a minute. Hey, now, there's a, there's a new arrival we haven't checked out yet. Well, who's he? Eddie Ford, Mrs Lomax's brother. Ah, oh, Mr Sykes. Running your sorrows, are you? Right. Incompetent plods in uniform has that effect on me. Oh, I'm sorry to hear it. We'll uh, try harder next time. Don't bother. What we've done, boys in uniform. Runaway sex mad teenagers. Doors being kicked in. Clueless doctors. Locals trying to use each other as footballs. It's better than the flicks, isn't it? There we are. Enjoy. Thanks, Oscar. Look, uh, I'll have a word with Mr. Ford. Have a chat with him. I mean, you've had your dinner, I haven't. I'm still starving. This is my dinner. Oh, shut up. Afternoon, Mrs Lomax. Heard from Carl. If I had, you think I'd tell you. Do you mind, officer? It's his private company. Actually, it's you I'd like to speak to, Mr Ford. Mind if I sit? What are you on about now? The village surgery was burgled last night. Who have you had staying the last few days? Just a couple of regulars, Phil. So, Bellamy, Hagensfield Police have certainly seen better days than this. First that uh, pill upset, then burglary, and now I hear drugs have been found circulating amongst our young ones. Well, it was easier in your day, Oscar. Just your name alone was enough to scare the villains away. <laughs> and how long have you been at this London address? Oh, months. Last night, after you left, where did you go? Straight home with my sister. After that, anywhere else? Nope. Stayed in, went to bed. Can you confirm that? Yeah. You're crazy if you think my brother kicked Dr. Summerby's door in. He'd every right to. Don't mean he did it. I'm not talking about vandalism, Mrs. Lomax. The surgery was raided and drugs were taken. Very dangerous drugs. You must be mad. 
Don't worry, they won't bother to check. Well, what if they do and they find out where you've really been living? So what? I've done my time. I'm a free man. I mean, how else could I be here to protect you? Yeah, yeah, but can you check again, please? No, no, that was the address I was given. Really? Right, thanks. Thanks for your help. The address Ford gave me, the nearest London station, says it doesn't exist. Aidensfield Police. Oscar? Are you sure, Oscar? You seem to forget who you're talking to, Bradley. In the force, the Blaketon memory was famous for its photographic quality. Ford's done time. Oscar overheard him say it. One up to Oscar. Phil, look, you see if you can track down Ford's record. I think I'd better go and have another word with Mrs Lomax. When did your brother get out of prison? You can ask him that. I will. But if you want to help your brother, you'll answer my question. I'll find out anyway. He got out a week ago. Why did he lie about his address? He knows how you are with people like us. And look at how you treated Carl. So what was he in for? I don't know, and I didn't ask. Me and Eddie lost touch ages ago. Your brother claimed he was here the night the surgery was burgled. You confirmed that. Is that the truth? I said so once. And I'm saying it again. Mrs Lomax, burglary and stealing dangerous drugs are both very serious crimes. If you're lying and we find out, it means you're involved. And how's that going to look when Carl comes up a sentence? friend we have in Mr. Sykes, eh? So, have we heard back from Ford yet? Uh, police records are still checking, Sarge. It's a common name, Eddie Ford. Sergeant Craddock! My daughter's run away. I think she's made off with the Lomax boy. Carl! Dad, it's all right, I'm here. I feel so ill, Carl. Dad, what's wrong? Have you eaten something? Nothing. Oh, just a pill with some water. Deb's not from that tap. All set for the big day? No. No. Well, I would be if he wasn't so dead against it. But the lads will be here in a minute with the slot machines. He won't listen to reason. Me, unreasonable. Just because I refuse to release gambling fever on my premises. 
It's not illegal, Oscar. Oh, you're telling me the law now, are you? No. It's just I'm wondering what Aidensfield Youth Club are going to say when they find out they're not going to get their dividends. What are you talking about now? Five percent of all the eventual profits were going to the local youth club. We were going to call it the Blaketon Initiative. Well, you never mentioned this before. Well, you never gave me a chance, Oscar. Yeah. Ah, fine fingers. Just... Where do you want this, Vernon? It's not for him to say, Bernie. Oh, cheer up, Oscar. Try it by the gents. Gents, right. No, not by the gents. If it's going to stay, it's going to stay somewhere I can see it. How about the snug, then? Snug. And not the snug. I may be old-fashioned, but I believe a snug should look like a snug. Well, shall we put it in the kitchen? You know, people can have a cup of tea while they use... No, David. Well, where do you want them, then? Well, since you ask, I don't want them anywhere. Full stop. Well, look, hang on. Let's do this right. Psychology. That's the key to where we place them. Look. Now, your regular customer comes in the pub, walks up to the bar, says hello to his mates. Hello, Harry. Hello, Charlie. Orders a pint. Pays his money. Gets the pint. Takes the first pull. Mmm. Gets his change. Turns and sees something more interesting than a pocket to put his loose change in. That's the place. And tonight's the night. You need help. No, don't leave me. Dave, you could get worse. Please, come. There's a phone box not too far away. I'll come back, I promise. I love you. I can't let you go through this. Just another day for you, Doctor, isn't it? But Mrs White, please. My daughter's run away from home because of you. Goodness knows what's going to happen to her. Now do you see what you've done? Run away. I'd no idea. I'm sorry. I don't know what I'm going to do. Why don't you come in? Arguing's not going to help, Deborah. We need to talk about this calmly. She's a sensible girl, Mrs. White. That's why she came to see me in the first place. She should have spoken to me. I'm her mother. Did you ever advise her about contraception? She's so young. I, I thought I had more time. It's not an easy subject for a parent. I, I wanted to many times, but too embarrassed, I suppose. When I was her age, the best contraception was the word no. Times have changed. Young people, especially young girls, need to understand the facts of life. I feel terrible. Then I've let her down. How safe are these pills? They're powerful drugs, Mrs. White, but under medical supervision, very safe. I ask because she's made off with the pills that I confiscated. So there will have been a gap between taking them. Mm. That could add to the risk of her getting pregnant. Excuse me. Hello, surgery. Has she eaten or drunk anything? OK, don't touch that water again. Where are you? Yeah, I think I know it. I'll leave now and the ambulance will follow. Carl, stay by the phone until I get there. Carl? Carl Lomax? He and Deborah were hiding out. Deborah's taken ill. Deborah ill? Try not to worry, Mrs. White. Mum, can you open these sweeties for me? Where'd you get them? In our room. Annie, where'd you find these? Over there. Right, I've got downstairs and play with Roy. I'll be down in a minute, all right? Off you go. Oh, she's poorly. 
She's in a van. She's shaking. Where What's is she? Wrong with her? She's there. Everyone, down she's in a van. Come on. Come on. Urgent. Yes. Aye. Right. Sarge. That was Mrs Lomax. She wants to see you. She says it's urgent. She wants us there before her brother gets back. Right. Bellamy, Bradley. Debs! Debs, don't stop up his ears! Deborah! Mum! It's all right, Deborah. We're here now. Mum! Is that what you're looking for? Yes. How did they get here? Eddie hid them in my kid's bedroom. They thought they were sweet. Has he ever dealt in drugs before? It's burglary, yeah, but drugs. Not that I know of. It's me! I called the police, Eddie. You? You shot your own brother? Me kids found them, Eddie. They were about to swallow them. You could have killed my kids! <laughs> The ambulance is here. Uh, we've heard from records, Sarge. Uh, Ford started dealing drugs whilst he was serving time. He was smuggling them in and flogging them to other inmates. Mm, perhaps now we'll consider a change of career. You'll certainly have plenty of time to ponder it. Uh, we found Carl Lomax. Ah. It was contaminated water. They have a few more tests to run, but she'll be fine. Can I see her? Not today, Carl, but I'm sure the police can arrange it when she's feeling stronger. Just a minute. She might have died, but for you. We'll always be in your debt. I did it for Debs. I know. Good luck with your court case. Mm. Thanks a lot. What'll happen to him? Well, after turning himself in and doing it to help Deborah, we're recommending that he get let off with a caution. Do you mind breathing into this, sir? A breath of uh, not less than ten and not more than twenty seconds, sir. Thank you. Do you need a car for your business, sir? Oh, dear, oh. Dear, oh dear. Hey, they look happy, Mr. Vernon. They're not supposed to look happy. They're supposed to look skint. He's Bernard. 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 You know, bloke called Cedric. Never mind that. What's going on with these machines? He just had a telephone call. Apparently, this Cedric fixed them. Well, that's right. He took them all to bits. 
I, t I told you about it. What you didn't tell him is that Zedric nobbled them. He let someone nobble my machines? I told you about it, you said it were all right. Cedric works for a man called Woods. He paid a visit to the garage, wanted to buy you one-armed bandits. In fact, he insisted on it. Yeah, I didn't pay any attention to it at the time. You didn't pay any attention to it? Hey, Scripps, you best do something quick. They're chucking out wins every other pull. <laughs> well, this keeps up the gold drinkers dry, Oscar. I've got to get them out of here. I've never known a night like this. Excuse me. What I haven't told him is I've just sold the lot to Woods. I bet, yes, for a loss too. No, Oscar. No, for once, Vernon's in profit. Turns out these machines are the last in the area that Woods doesn't own. Amazing what he was prepared to offer to get rid of the competition. That's all right for you, buddy. I want to know who's going to pay this bar bill. But what part of the deal? No. Yeah, Woods is going to pay that and all. Well, I'll just go and tell Mr Vernon not to worry about the bar bill. Yeah, not so fast. Let him sweat for a bit on the thought that he'll be washing pub glasses for a month. Oh, what a wonderful thought. More, 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 more. Oh,